Hey, welcome back. I'm guessing by now you should be able to look after yourself. If you're a beginner, you might want to check out the last video, but otherwise you should have an idea about what your aim is for this life, or maybe you just want to roll and see how it pans out. It's all good. Whatever you decide to do, let's go over some intermediate tips and tricks. Let's talk about guns. Arguably one of the most important items in the game. You may already have found some as you loot the spawn area and progress into the map, but they will usually be a tier 1 gun like the BK-13 or repeat. <coughs> what does tier 1 mean? Very generally speaking, as you move into the map, you will progress into higher tiered areas. The higher the tier, the better the equipment, including the guns you can find. Tier 1 obviously at the bottom, and tier 4 at the top. However, in reality it's not quite that simple. Every area on the map has a designation and can be broken down into village, farm, hunting, industrial and military to name a few. And some of the items can spawn in multiple tiers within these areas, like the Mosin for example, which is tier 2 and 3 town and hunting spawns. In addition to this, certain weapons can only be found at helicopter crash sites, the static contaminated zones at Pavlovo and Riffy, and the newly added train spawns. It might sound like a lot to take in, but as long as you're progressing into the map you should start to find better guns. Obviously it does mean that not just the military areas are important on the map. It is a good idea to loot them, but seeing that Mosins and Winners spawn in hunter locations, for example, the general stores in towns, summer camps and deer stands are also highly attractive. As a side note, as you progress into the map you might start hearing noises for the helicopter crash sites. You can hear them from up to 2 kilometers away. It's well worth heading to the sound if you do hear it as they contain some of the best loot in the game. Get to the as for ammo, we'll typically find it at the same spawns as the gun, and more often than not we'll have an easier time finding it. Moving on to armour, since none of the high capacity or tactical vests offer any ballistic protection, there are only three vests in the game that do. Along with getting better weapons, you should prioritise this since it will stop you getting one tapped. Ah. Starting with the stab vest, it is a police spawn so you will find it in most PDs, but it's almost always easier to loot them from police zeds. You can find them in most towns including from spawn so it's a good idea to try and get one straight away. Moving on to the press vest, it offers the same amount of protection as the stab vest does, but you can get shot more before the vest is ruined, it's a good upgrade. It also has the benefit of having some inventory slots as well. You can find it at police spawns and towns in tier 3 and 4, so just general looting of houses usually. Weighing a whopping 12 kilos, the plate carrier offers the best protection in the game. It only spawns on military zeds, the better in mind if you're looking for one. You'll need to look for the Z with a combat helmet on and you may need to bring a leather sewing kit or epoxy putty to repair it, since it's likely to be damaged. Speaking of helmets, these four military helmets also offer ballistic protection from headshots. Since they all offer the same protection, it's really down to personal preference which one you choose. A combat helmet is often overlooked since it gives you a rather phallic shape when you wear it, but if it gets the job done, it might just stop you seeing the UR dead screen. The tactical helmet has the NVG slot, meaning you don't need the head strap, while the Gorka helmet is also popular as it has high insulation and it also has the visor attachment. The visor does not offer any extra protection though and is purely cosmetic. This may change, but personally, I don't use the visor as the glare can make you stand out a lot. And now you're probably packing a couple of guns, some armor and a helmet, which could weigh up to 20 kilograms or so. So let's talk about inventory and stamina. Obviously, the more you carry, the less stamina you have. It's fine if you want to carry all the things, but it might affect your survivability. For example, if you need to run to some cover if you're being shot at, run away from too many zeds, holding your breath while aiming, or even jump in a wall. Unless you're happy with dropping your bag all the time, it's a good idea to go through your inventory and drop anything you don't need or is too heavy. Like carrying 5 stacks of rags, 17 knives, or shotgun shells, but you dropped the shotgun 2 hours ago. It all adds up. If you're adamant that the stuff is all yours and shall not be dropped, there's some easy wins just by swapping some things out. Take jackets for example, they can weigh a ton so there's some easy stamina gains to be had even if you do have to sacrifice inventory slots. Melee weapons too. The sledgehammer is great but it weighs a ton and takes up a lot of room. A knife and brass knuckles are good alternatives but there's plenty of others. Try and find a stamina level you're comfortable with. For me, I prefer to keep it high, around 50% even when geared. This means I can still be mobile and push other players' positions with ease. Damn it! 
If you struggle dropping gear or you have something you want to keep for another life, then you might want to consider making a stash. For overground storage, if you don't fancy hauling a barrel into a forest somewhere, then you can craft a shelter kit with a rope and four sticks, which will let you craft an improvised shelter. This will give you 100 slots, which should be more than enough. These usually last for 7 days before they despawn, but the timer will refresh if you interact with it. Bear in mind your gear is only as secure as someone stumbling across it though. If this is a concern, you can always make a buried stash instead. You'll need an item to act as a container, such as a cooking pot or a dry sack, or even a teddy bear. Or if you need more space than a fur bag or a dry bag, you'll also need something to bury it with, such as a shovel, pickaxe or hoe. Buried stashes last for 14 days, and whilst someone could come along and dig it up, they're a lot harder to spot. So there you have it. If you still need more, here's some bonus tips. If you're struggling to find a gun, this house on the hill northwest of Komarovo almost always has a gun when I look there, such as a Blazer or Mosin, as well as ammo. Or, if you're lucky, right here slap bang in the middle of Cherno. They're well worth checking out, but there are plenty of others which I'm sure you'll come across as you loot over and over on new lives. Tripwires are great to have if you're running solo. I'm not talking about grenade traps, but if you need to take five to heal up, cook, or just sort some stuff out, securing the door with a tripwire will give you the advantage against unannounced guests as it locks them in the stumble animation temporarily. You can actually dodge zombie attacks by blocking as usual and using one of the lean keys when it takes a swipe. You don't see it used a lot, but it's worth practicing as it can be useful to get out of a tight spot or if you're being shot at while fighting a Z and need to run. Helicopter crash sites are mostly on the west of the map. If you want to try hunting them down, running around Northwest Airfield isn't a bad idea since there's a large concentration there. As you're looting military areas, look out for tactical goggles. They're more than just a fashion accessory and I consider them an essential now. They remove sun glare without the colorization of sunglasses which is a huge advantage when fighting other players against the sun. If you do have low stamina, consider keeping an EpiPen for an emergency. They spawn in hospitals and give you unlimited stamina for 60 seconds. Perfect for a quick getaway. Finally, regarding stashes, if you want to go to one of the static toxic zones, the NPC suit and gas mask fits in a dry bag so you can always bury it and dig it up later. And there you go. Pro tips, 